What are they saying about you that's stopping you? Will you be limited to how other people define you? Will you spend the rest of your life living up to their ideas of who you are? Or do you have the courage to break the mold? This sermon today is not for the status quo. It is not for the ordinary. It is not for the routine or the ritualistic. This is for jailbreak people who will not wait to be released, but you are going to break out of the dungeon of mediocrity and step into the realm of exceptionalism. This is your moment. It is now or never. If you don't do it now, you're not going to do it at all. You have to make up in your mind, this is the moment. I am not who you think I am. 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 How dare you define me by your understanding. I am not who you say I am. If I close the book and sit down, I already said enough. Because if you will take what I said and apply it to your life, you will cease to be defined by what you were in because just because you were in it does not mean that you are of it. Oh my God. Are, are, are you going to be one of them or are you going to be exceptional? I think, I'm not sure, but I think there are some exceptional people. Let all the exceptional people identify yourself this morning. Everybody stayed except me. Everybody quit except me. Everybody fainted except me. Everybody committed suicide except me. Everybody died except me. Everybody lost their mind except me. Everybody quit. Let the exceptional people give God a praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want you to be bold. I want you to be radical. I want you to be tenacious and walk over to somebody, look them straight in the eye, shake them by the hand, and tell them, I am exceptional. Yeah. If you get me, you got an exceptional man. If you get me, you got an exceptional woman. If you get me, you got an exceptional child. If you get me, you got an exceptional worker. I am let the exceptional people give God a praise right now. Anytime exceptional people dwell in the midst of ordinary thinking people, there's always going to be conflict. Don't try to get along with people who think ordinary when you know God made you to think exceptional. Don't even try to reason with them. Don't try to argue with them. Don't try to straighten them out. We speak two different languages. You are speaking ordinary and I am talking exceptional. Exceptional people make some noise. This is a fight between ordinariness and exceptionalism. Your daddy is a carpenter. Stay in your place. Be like your kinfolks. Act like your relatives. Live like your neighborhood. What are you doing driving that kind of car? You mean you going to school? How dare you open up your own business? Stay in your place. You supposed to be swinging a hammer driving in nails, stay in your place. I saw where you came from. The question before you is, will you be ordinary, fit in with the pack, run with the wolves, or will you step out and be exceptional? Not superior, just exceptional. Root word to exceptional is accept. 
You can't be exceptional if you don't have the word accept. Accept. It, it happens to everybody. They all live that way. They all think that way. They all feel privy to that. It, oh my God. Let all the exceptional people identify yourself this morning. Truth of the matter is that most people don't realize that the majority of people suffer their first major heart attack on Monday morning between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. People getting ready to go to jobs that they don't like, jobs that are making them sick. What is it that you could love doing seven days a week that will bring a smile to your face? Think about that. You've got to start saying yes to your life. You've got to start saying yes to your dreams, yes to your unfolding future, yes to your potential. How many of you know within yourself, if you ask yourself the question, have I done all that I'm capable of doing or being and living up to my potential? How many of you have to really ask, answer, no, I have not done all that I can do? Raise your hands, please. Okay, very good. Now, here's what we know. That people don't do what they know in life, but what they do is they operate within the context of the vision they have of themselves. So what I want to share with you is how to begin to get a larger vision of yourself and how to begin to make this your decade. Because in order to do that, it's going to be very challenging. It's going to require a lot of work on your part, an ongoing process of personal and professional self-mastery. And it's going to require that you begin to see yourself worthy of the requirements in terms of effort, in terms of commitment, in terms of action, in terms of preparation, or whatever it is that you need to do in order to take your life where you want to take it. So one of the first things I ask you to do is I want you to look at your life right now and think about something that's important to you, something that gives your life a sense of value. Think about something that you'd like to have or something you'd like to create for you or your family or for society. I want you to hold this thought in mind. Now, one of the first things I want you to do is don't worry about the inner conversation that you're going to have. Don't worry about how you're going to do it. That's going to come. You're going to develop a plan of action. You will find the way. You'll become the kind of person that can attract the people, the resources, and everything you need in order to make that become reality. But I want you to be mindful of your inner conversation. I want to ask you a question. How many of you have ever thought about...